next. This time it's just going to say and find each root, okay? Even roots, you just use the sign out front. Out front. And odd roots, same thing. You use the sign out front. Okay, even roots. You cannot have a negative inside. Odd roots, you can have a negative inside. The square root sign or the radical sign will already be drawn for you. So I'm going to get my list for part A, and they want me to go to the cube list. You can see there's a cube out there. I'm going to find 8. Just like my rules indicated up above, odds are allowed to have a negative inside. The cube root of 8 is 2, but the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Part B. The cube root of point, or excuse me, the square root of, okay, so this is an even number, this is a square root. The square root of 0 0.04. Well, the square root of 4 is 2. Because it was 0 0.04, it's positive 2. The outside was a positive, so my answer is only a positive 0 0.2, not plus and minus. The directions just say find the, the singular one that they're listing. Part C, we have a fourth root. Now a fourth root is even. Do you see this negative inside? That's no good. We can't have a negative and an even. in The negative can't be inside. So we write no real solutions. Part D. Part D is a little sneaky. It is a square root, and you might be tempted to think that there's no answer to this particular problem um, because this is even, and it almost looks like there's a negative inside. But if we were to square this negative 2, we would get a positive 4. I hope you agree with that. And the square root of positive 4 is just a positive 2. So the negative kind of plays itself out in this problem, so it's okay. Try these again. Cube root, go to your cube list. Negatives are okay because it's odd. So I'm gonna find 27. The cube root of 27 is three. Since it was negative on the inside, it's negative on the answer. Part B, we have a fourth root, which is even. And I have a negative on the inside. Well, that's not allowed. So automatically I'm going to write no real solutions and move on. Okay, part C, I have a square root. It's even. Now remember, it's not actually going to end up being negative on the inside because negative 7 squared is actually a positive 49. So I go to my square list. Here's 49. The answer is a positive 7. Part D, I have a square, which is even, and I have a negative inside that can't be fixed. So I'll write no real solution. Part 3 of the notes. Part 3 of the notes is going to say simplify each radical expression. The same idea as part two. So the same rules apply. So whatever the sign is out front. So I'll write use sign out front. Or in front, whatever you want. Same thing over here. Use sign in the front. Okay, ready? Even roots, you cannot have a negative inside. So a negative inside is a no. Okay? This one, if you have a negative inside, oop, I forgot my N, <laughs> inside, that is okay. You won't have plus and minus, you'll only have the whatever sign is in the front. Part A. 
So I'm going to go to my square roots. The square root of 16 is just 4. Now what some kids don't understand is how to work the variables from Algebra 1. You have 8 x's. Maybe you want to draw all 8 of them until you understand this concept. This is a square root, right? So because it's a square root, I need groups of 2. So I'm going to circle two at a time. How many groups of two did I circle? Four groups. That means I can pull out x to the fourth. We'll practice this a lot to get the, until we get this down. Cube roots. Well, I have no numbers to deal with, only variables. So here's six a's. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to group them in groups of three. You ready? So here's one group of three. Here's two groups of three. That means I'm going to end up with an A squared because I have two groups of three. And I don't know how we want to write that. Maybe here, like just write two groups. Okay, now nine B's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine B's. Maybe you're already like dividing in your head. Can you see I have three groups of three? That means the answer is going to become B to the third power. Okay, part C. I need to pull out groups of four. So how many groups of 4 exist within x to the 8? Well, division will tell you x squared. How many groups of 4 fit with y to the 12th? Division will tell you 3. So the shortcut there was I did 8 divided by 4 to give me my 2, and I did 12 divided by 4 to give me my 3. They'll get more difficult. They won't be perfect later on, but today they will be perfect. Okay, square root. Here's a number. The square root of 81 is, if we take a look at our sheet, 9. Division will tell you 4 divided by 2. You're going to be able to take out two groups of 2. <coughs> Part B. No numbers to deal with. I need groups of 3. So 12 divided into groups of 3 makes 4 total. 12 divided by 3. 15 broken down to 3 is 15 divided by 3 is 5. Part C. You will have 12 broken down by 4. So you will have 3 groups. 12 divided by 4. 16 broken down by 4 makes 16 divided by 4 or 4. So you can write them all out like I did at the beginning or just use division. One more section and then I promise we're all done for today. Notice everything's had like really nice pretty answers. All the numbers were found on this sheet. Um, we'll make it harder and eventually we'll have to reduce these but we're going to start real basic today. Now let's say that we're solving for x and x has a certain power. Well, if that power is even, when you solve for x, you have to use plus and minus. Please remember, you cannot take the root of a negative with evens. That is not okay. With odds, you will either use positive or negative. You will not use both. And you are allowed to have the square root of negative. That is okay. Or the cube root or fifth root, an odd root of a negative. Let's practice with one, two, three, four, five problems. Notice I have some that are negative and some that are not. To undo an x squared, you take the square root. So, we, and we talked about that before. The square root of nine is three. So I write x equals plus and minus 3 because a positive 3 squared is 9 and a negative 3 squared is 9. So when you solve for x, you'll use plus and minus 
because this was even. Look at this one. We're not just going to take the square root this time. We're going to take the fourth root this time because this was an x to the fourth power. It's kind of hard to see, but hopefully you can see it okay in your notes. <coughs> so the fourth root of 16, a lot of kids will do the square root, but we need the fourth root of 16. Fourth root of 16 is 2. So this was even. Because it's even and I'm solving for x, I'll use plus and minus. The fourth root we just said was 2. Remember, when you're solving for x and it's even, you use plus and minus. This time, to get rid of this cube, we will use a cube root. So whatever power you see is the root that we use. So cube root of 27, I'm going to put this paper here, go to the cube root, go to 27, the answer is 3. This is odd, so I just use whatever sign it was. Well, it was positive. So the answer is just 3. I will not use plus and minus because it's not even. What undoes a square? Hopefully you're saying a square root. So this becomes x equals, oh, but look, this is even, right? And we have a negative inside. That means no real solution. I know hopefully from chapter 4 you remember it has an imaginary solution, but right now we're concerned about the real solutions. Evens cannot be negative inside. Now the cube root, we're going to, or excuse me, the x to the cube, we're going to take the cube root to get x by itself. This becomes x, and this becomes, this becomes, let's take a look at our chart. The cube, the cube root of 27 is a 3, because this one was Because this one was negative, the answer is going to be negative. That is allowed because this is an odd root. So negatives are okay. So the main idea today is that you know when to use plus and minus, that you know how to take the cube root, the square root, the fourth root, and that you can kind of understand this sheet and how to use it. All we need for problem four is our calculator and um, just reading the problem and plugging things in. Using a radical expression, academics. Some teachers adjust test scores when a test is difficult. One teacher's formula for test adjusting scores, kind of like a curve, is A equals 10 times the square root of R. A is the new adjusted score and R is the original or the raw score. The raw scores on one testing range from a 36, which would be like an F, to a 90, which is almost like an A. What is the range of the new adjusted scores? So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in 36 into our equation. So we'll do the adjusted score is 10 square root of plug in 36. So that's really just 10 times the square root of 36 is 6. So the new adjusted score is a 60. So now what does that mean? That means somebody who scored a 36 is now scoring a 60%. Now let's do the highest score. So 10 square roots of 90. Well, this isn't going to be a perfect number because the square root of 90 is not perfect. So we'll do 10 square root of 90. And we get a 94 point. Does it tell us what to round to? It does not. So we'll do 94.9. So what that means to us is that while the old scores were a 36 to a 90, the new scores, the new range, they are going to start at a 60%, and the highest grade will be a 94.9%. That's how we do, that's how that particular teacher does adjusted scores. That's actually how a lot of teachers probably do whenever they, that's called a curve on a test. You've heard of curves. So let's say that somebody got a zero. What's the new adjusted for a score for a zero and the new adjusted score for 100%? So you would write adjusted score equals 10 times the square root of zero which is really just 10 times 0 or a 0. So what's kind of important to note here is that an adjusted score of 0 is still a 0. The adjusted score of 100, you may be surprised to know that person's not going to get more than 100 because 10 times the square root of 100 is, I want, do you know before I type it in? 
it's still 100. So an adjusted score helps everybody except for somebody who gets a zero and somebody who gets 100 because the new adjusted scores are actually the same as the original. Um, so as long as you can, the, the whole thing about problem four, as long as you can take an equation, plug in the number they gave you and use your calculator, you're able to use and solve radical expressions. Mm -hmm.